Hi folks, Florida Man here. Today it's my pleasure to bring you a long diplomacy commentary that one of my patrons and I recorded on a game we played together. So a special thanks to King of Prussia for participating in this video with me. Enjoy! King of Prussia, you and I just finished playing Saber and Musket Diplomacy, created by, uh, I guess, Illuminati Joe is what he is currently calling himself. Yep. And um, I, I enjoyed it. I played as Kajar Iran. You played as... The Ottoman Empire. And um, what were your first thoughts on seeing this map to the best of your recollection? Uh, so my first thought was, I don't want to be attacked by all of my neighbors. That would end poorly. Uh, and there were two major options I considered. I considered working primarily with Oman against Naj, and then stabbing him and eating him. It looked like a pretty natural expansion pathway. I also considered primarily ignoring the South and working with Russia in a juggernaut. Mm. Um, alternative juggernaut, but it, honestly, it would still be pretty similar, and we could probably roll over a lot of the map. Uh, but the first Russia was a little bit unresponsive, so we just agreed to DMZs of Wallachia and the Black Sea. Mm. And uh, in the south, all my neighbors appeared friendly at first, so I talked to Oman about working together, and he seemed pretty okay with it. I proposed that he would get um, boss and I would get ASM. And then I also proposed to Naj that I get Alj, he get BRY, and that we would DMZ Kuwait and the Persian Gulf. Now, I completely intended to stab Naj on that. And I also, I also reached out to you as Persia, and we agreed to a bounce in Waz as an anti-Russia method, because I was talking to you about attacking Russia, but the viability of that for me was not really certain at the time, because there was not really an easy way to get you up there, at least from what I was looking at. Yeah. Uh, on, on my end, um, to be honest, you as a power that started with four centers, and in, on this map, the only power that started with four centers... And also somebody who had um, a foothold in the Saudi Arabian region. I was thinking that I should consider making you my first target. Yeah. And um, I, I thought, you know, if I take out Ottoman, then I can get that nice corner position that he has, and then I can expand into Russia. That then I'll then I'll have the entire top left area of this map. Then you may as well be soloing. Exactly. Like then, then I'm very safe, and I'm just, I'm just figuring out who to pit against who to get to my solo. But um, although I think I did a good job of creating a coalition with Omani Empire and Najd, I ultimately, <laughs> I, I started to find I, I was having trouble in some of my other negotiations, and so my attention started to go elsewhere as the beginning stages went on. Yeah. Um, so, this was the first season of the game. Yes, and you and I were doing our, our actually quick correction. I think did um, I think Sevastopol went to Kra, and this is the mistaken first map that the GM posted. Oh, you're right, you're right. Um, this is okay. So the mistakes are that Sevastopol went to Krakow and um, Krasnodar. Oh, it's yeah. Krasnodar. I think the next slide would be a correction. Because I, I remember him posting one. About that. I will check on my side. Okay, it does have actually where everything correctly ended up. At least. Okay, we can work with that. Yeah. Um, so Russia did go to Krasnodar. Um, yep. And you went to Bulgaria naturally. The guaranteed center for Ottoman remains the same in both versions of the map. <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> No, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> there should be some continuity. I, I like that this is like this game takes place off the edge of the normal diplomacy map. Yeah, it's like um, almost as if you could imagine that this is happening at the same time as a regular diplomacy game. But if it were, you'd have to imagine at some point France or Italy or Austria would come knocking. <laughs> that would be a very interesting <laughs> sequence of events. But. Um, Yes, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. This game takes place in the 1800s instead of the 1900s. Yes. It's that name, Saber and Musket Diplomacy. Um, so you're doing pretty well out of um, the first first season, I think. You've got into 
a couple of juicy neutrals and you are perhaps positioned to either get this other one near the Red Sea here or to at least be a determining factor in who does get it. Yeah. Um, where, how, where were you in terms of diplomacy at this point? So I don't think I paid enough attention in this season. I saw Naj violate the DMZ and I knew he was an enemy immediately, uh, but I didn't look uh, at the subtle undertones of Oman's moves because in at the time I thought that there was a decent chance that Oman and I would cooperate. Uh, I was uh, I asked him for support in Tucson, and when he didn't respond, that was when I pretty figured out that he was an enemy. But probably should have known that before then, given he moved into BOS in the first season and not Goa. Where if he moved into Goa, he could have guaranteed Hassan and hampered Naj expansion. Uh, on the northern front, Russia was acting about as friendly as he could to me, so I was pretty confident there that we weren't going to have issues. And you and I did our balance as agreed, so I didn't think at this point that you were going to be an enemy. Yeah, I, I was um, I was a little slippery. I, I think um, I was originally planning that I would move against you pretty soon from this point. Yeah. But in the east, I started to have some problems in that uh, what I felt was a reasonable split of neutral centers that I proposed with Qing was something that uh, Qing and I think Russia were not so willing to agree to. And um, I, I don't want to say that Qing's being greedy, but... He was trying to seize everything he possibly could, and from his very secure corner position, he had the leverage to at least um, make a good, take a good shot at things that I did not want him to have, along, yeah, yeah. along with Russia. Yep. Uh, and then, as the season went on, during the builds, I think it was, it just moves. Here we are. Fall, fall moves here. Yeah. So this was, I think, for both of us, this would probably be somewhat expected. Yeah. This ended up, ended up working out okay for me, this um, idea of the division I had proposed with Ching. But in order to make it work, I had to suddenly commit everything east because Ching wanted to work with me against India. Yeah. And that's why I attack, uh, or I tap India's position in uh, Hyderabad, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and move out of ISF to ban, move Tehran to ASH, and Ching supports me there because I'm now helping him. Um, but now my interest in your side of the map is pretty much, is pretty much at an end. I, I don't want to participate in taking you down at all anymore. And Just keep our DMZs and go our separate ways. Yeah, and if anything, I, I start thinking that maybe I should, if, if, uh, if you start to lose ground, I might have to pay more attention to this side of the map again. Yeah, so um, at this point for me, this is about what I expected to happen. Oman and Naj are obviously working together. Uh, I supported myself to hold. And I'm at this point, most of my planning is just going into what tactics I can use to be annoying to my opponents, because I'm outnumbered a lot. But the quirks of the Ottoman position in this game were quite nice, in that there were in that there's enough like fluidity in Arabia that I was, as we'll see later, I was able to kind of sneak around and be rather annoying, even when I wasn't in any type of dominant position. Yes, I, uh, I, I, I didn't know how much of that to attribute to quirks versus, well, we'll, we'll discuss it when we get there. Yeah. Uh, so now we're at the builds phase. Yes. Yeah, now we're at the builds phase. Russia built a couple new armies. You got two new fleets. New, yes, new fleets. I also got new armies. So, and, and uh, perhaps most important are the Najd and Omani builds. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, um, it's Najd, I think it's more obvious that his builds are not friendly to you because he built an army in Riyadh and a fleet in Qatar. Yeah. And he, if, if he wanted to uh, go against Omani, then probably Cutter needed to be an army. Yeah. Uh, so my builds, I had Khan, which is double purpose. I was going to put it in Med, and then Khan away Bulgaria to Jerusalem. And then after that, that fleet was designated to go to ATL at the very bottom of the map, because Med and ATL are linked. And that would just be very annoying for Oman to deal with, and he couldn't really do anything to stop me. 
uh, the Cairo fleet was just to hold Red Sea, because as long as I have Red Sea, Oman can't touch me at all. And the longer Oman can't touch me, the more tempted he's going to be to stab Naj. That sounds like a good strategic play. Thank you. Uh, also, at this point, before we go to spring moves, uh, Russia starts telling me that I'm going to be attacked by Persia pretty soon. Uh, so, um, that was kind of a negative. Uh, and I was preparing for the inevitability that I might lose a home center this year. Uh, but I was, you know, I was hoping for the best. I was hoping that my Persian eastern neighbor would decide that, obviously, the Ottomans isn't a really realistic target for him to attack. So we'll see about that. Well, certainly not at this point in the game, I would think. I mean, I'm, I'm so overly invested in the east. I, I'm sure that you'll probably be completely un unscathed by me. Oh, wait. Uh -oh. Uh. <laughs> now, uh, this move by Russia was sort of prearranged in that he was offering to help me, but also said that he wanted it to look like he was attacking me. I was kind of skeptical of the idea of let's make it look like I'm attacking you because uh, there's a quote that I just remembered you said uh, is that a fake attack on Austria often turns into a real attack on Austria. And I was not particularly fond of the idea, uh, but I didn't really have a choice in the matter at this point. So I just kind of went with it. I... I can feel that I've been in that position before more than once. And yeah, I, when I have the leverage, I will always try to tell my allies that a fake stab is usually not very productive. It's um, all, all the leverage that you take out on, that you take relative to your ally is much more threatening relative to the diplomatic leverage that you might obtain over someone else who is expecting that you've now betrayed them. Yeah. Usually not, the juice is not worth the squeeze. <laughs> um, and I am just uh, shocked to look back and see how um, aggressive my moves were here. <laughs> Normally, you know, I'm a man of peace. Uh, of course. And then I believe this is where I give you a bunch of uh, talk about how this is a bad idea for you and how you can't hold on. Like the only thing you're going to get out of this is maybe Alb. And apart from that, you know, you can't hold on to it. And there's just not much point to this whole thing. I think was the gist of it. Uh, and this is why I was saying earlier, King, you're, you're a very persuasive guy. And I'm like, there's a part of me that I'm always, you know, greedily looking for the next supply center I can grab. But there's also a part of me that's just rational and is thinking, you know, what he's saying has a point, and maybe I'll get that, and I'll get the one dot, and that will be the price, or the, that will be the only gain I get, and Nedged will become this massive Saudi Arabian empire, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be squeezed between him and Ching by the end. Although you can see this season, I'm also stabbing Ching. <laughs> <laughs> chaos i sometimes i get overexcited and and become an agent of chaos i was relying on russia to be my ally here in both fronts and i figured if i have russia i have the element of surprise i have um certainly more armies between me and russia on the western front to fight off to fight against you and i figured Nedged is also attacking you, so yep. this will be a very quick fight, and if I don't hurry up and participate, I will miss out on all the spoils, even though I also want to go after Ching. Now, this is a big mistake, but it's the kind of mistake that's sometimes hard to make when you're greedy. Hard, hard not to make when you're greedy. Yeah. And then, uh, other moves. Uh, the only other move I can mention is that uh, Oman and I played a nice little guessing game in the Red Sea, and he won. Oh, I see. Oh, because you were trying to decide if he was going to advance to Seg or try to dislodge Red Sea? Yep. Uh, but he moved south to Goli instead of moving it to Yemen, so I was fine in the fall anyways, luckily. <laughs> and then uh, here we uh, reconciled and decided to attack Russia. Uh, unfortunately, you get stabbed immediately at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I was um, I was aware that that was happening. I was aware that Russia was about to stab me. 
most likely, which is why I started like really seriously talking to you and also really seriously talking to Ching about stabbing Russia's stab of me, which is why you see I move Ash to nuke here. I was expecting and hoping at least for Ching to support me instead of Russia and Ching did not. He did the reverse of that, but I, I couldn't even really blame him because I just stabbed <laughs> Ching. <laughs> Fortunately, unlike Ching, you kept your word and supported me into Armenia instead of supporting Russia into Waz. I, uh, I stabbed Russia here because this was uh, an arrangement between me and him. He was going to help me fight you, and instead I took your side and supported you into Armenia and supported myself into Khan. Yeah, if you hadn't done that, I think we would have seen um, a really big Russian empire very soon because... yeah. He 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 had a good he had a good plan. He was he was flipping on me with both of my enemies, and so I wouldn't have had a chance. Um, he also moved away from uh, Bulgaria, which I was very happy to see because that meant that I was not going to be immediately knifed in the throat. And yep. in the south, I supported myself into Jerusalem to make sure that he wouldn't bounce me using MCC. Because I wanted to, I, mean, I knew I was inevitably going to lose Alge to Naj. Nothing I can do about that. So I wanted to make sure I was in the best position next year to try to make things annoying for him. And luckily, at the same time, this is where uh, my little, because I had, uh, ever since Oman and Naj had teamed up with me, I had been messaging Oman periodically, being like, hey, you know, if you keep waiting to stab Naj, he's going to build a bunch of armies and then you're going to lose. And this is where it pays off because he starts fighting Naj. But the stab is just really ineffective. So <laughs> I'm very happy to see that in the South. Yeah, it's um, you can tell Naj sort of saw it coming because Naj moves San to ASM and is, is just doing what whatever he needs to do to slow Omani's stab down while also still attacking you. Yep. Um, I was also, I believe, I was also trying to split them up myself around this time. <laughs> and... Um, Trying to, trying to hamper the attack on you because you and you you were my only ally at this point. Although I think yeah. shortly I also pick up India as a comrade. Yeah. After this whole mess. Yeah. Look so at then, this. After this, uh, after I see what happens in Central Asia, I'm I apologize to Russia basically, <laughs> and I I just try not to go to war with him because that would end poorly for me. I think. <laughs> Um, and I'm just kind of preparing for the South at this point. It's my only concern. That's that's good. It's important in diplomacy to have focus. Go after one at one one front at a time. <laughs> Ideally, make sure to set a good example for all your viewers. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't notice that, but uh, I. I yeah, it was not. That was not a good move for me. I, I could have gotten so big, and instead, I end up um, fairly stagnant here. It's just I I hold about what I held at the beginning of the year. Actually, about what I held at the end of the first year, and so like I just traded. Um, actually, I just lost Ash. I didn't gain anything new, really. Yeah, I also I lost Alice and didn't gain anything. So we're both on the decline at this point. Uh, luckily, you disbanded ARM, which made it very easy for me to decide that Russia was actually going to be my friend, <laughs> or, or at least my non-aggression pact participant, as you'll see. <laughs> uh, and I disbanded Red Sea because that unit, uh, I was talking with Oman, and that was one of the things he didn't quite like about my position was that I had a unit right there. So I got rid of that. Not much use to that point, anyways. And we see that uh, Nejd built a southern army here as well. So reinforcing the uh, current relationship between you and Oman, Nejd is showing hostility to Oman. So, if Oman had wanted to, to turn on you, it's just very inconvenient. Yeah. And now we see what I would call the beginning of your comeback. I, I, I found it remarkable when I saw that you, um, you did get pretty small in this game. You were down to just basically a little more than home centers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is what I would call the beginning of your comeback. And also happily, this is a moment when Russia realizes that working with me in the East is not such a bad idea. I'm pointing out to him that 
Ching is actually quite large and powerful, and as I've mentioned before, greedy. Got to watch out for Ching. He'll he'll gobble you up. And the fact is, Russia that from uh, I'm I'm telling him yeah. that Nook and Ash and uh, ATY, all these centers are really vulnerable to being captured by Ching if you ever leave them unguarded. So uh, this this front that you have with me. It's not going to give you anything that you'll be able to keep because Ching is just too strong. He's got this corner position. He has all these armies and multiple centers up there, so he's not going to leave that area vacant. You're not. You're never going to be secure if you leave Ching alive in that region. Yeah, and at the same time, Russia converts the festival to a fleet, which um, is a little bit stressful for me to see. Uh, but I'm just working on convincing him that you don't need to attack me right now because then Nas is just going to take over and you're going to have to deal with a bigger problem. And uh, that's about as much as I can say to Russia right now because I did just stab him and I cannot afford to fight him anymore. Well, fortunately for you, I think Russia is doing a better job of following my advice than I am of only having one front. And so he is... Um... Uh, you can see from his moves, he's he's very uninterested right now, at this moment at least, in fighting you. He's moving yeah. Crab back to PRK. He's moving basically everything against Ching. And India is also working with us against Ching. Um, so we'll, we'll see how well that goes. Maybe we'll defeat Ching and crush him. <laughs> yeah, it's a, definitely a possibility. Um, and at the same time, I see that um, you take Alj from Najd Najd is taking Alb from you, yeah. and um, Oman and Najd are sort of grappling in the south, although Oman gets distracted taking Boss, the neutral. <laughs> which, you know, he could have also taken San instead. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of time for that. There's no rush. Exactly. Take, it ni- take it nice and slow. Exactly. No bias here. Um... <laughs> No, I'm in no hurry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so then I did. I lost uh, Jerusalem and Alb in the uh, the fighting, but it's not a permanent loss. I set it up so that in the fall I'd be able to get at least one of them back and stay constant. Yeah, and I see you. Um, I think from the looks of this, you're gonna get you're gonna get the, uh, j- at so least Jerusalem back. I get Jerusalem back, and then I retreat Alb south into BRY because he didn't cover it. He couldn't cover it. No, so you're you're not winning this year. Your Nedged is uh, is in trouble because of being well attacked on both sides. So his forces are divided, and you're doing um, you're doing very well at being the main beneficiary of him being defeated slowly. Because Oman, I think, gains nothing here. He gets he gets the neutral sign. He gains nothing from that. No. <laughs> He doesn't weaken his enemy, and I don't know what he's going to do with an extra unit at this point, given his moves. <laughs> no, that, that might not help very much right now. He, he really just needs to go after San, and then, then he can see about taking AFI and Qatar. Yep. On, then, uh, sorry? Go for it. I was going to let you explain the East. Oh, yes. I was going to say, on the bright side, a, a significant success that Oman is having is helping us against Ching. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know why he did this. I mean, I, I would say that this is this is one of those times when just trying to be likable and having a good rapport with people really comes in handy because I just asked him. I, I didn't have like a strong motivation for him to do it, and I asked him for a favor, and he was okay with it. <laughs> um. And, uh, you know, it, once, once I defeat Ching, I'll eventually be able to come west and help Amon against you and Ned, Najd, or yeah. whoever he happens to be fighting at the time. <laughs> and he's Future's a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's investing in the relationship, which uh, we'll see if that pays off. Um, at the same time, I, although I am uh, supporting India successfully retaking Hyderabad from Ching, uh, the the other successes are kind of mixed. The situation isn't um, isn't an entirely perfect one. Ching gets cobbled from me here, so personally, I am actually still losing ground. <laughs> Although my alliance is perhaps you know doing relatively well at positioning ourselves for the best 
uh, attack on Ching that we can manage. You are meeting expectations. <laughs> I, uh, you could say that. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets, I think. Well, so then, Cabal destroyed, and I'm going to retreat south. I, th I thought, I th yeah, pretty sure I went to BRY here. Um, I'm sure you did. Yeah, I did. It was the fall, so I would have had to or disbanded. So. Yeah, yeah, you went to BRY. Why? We can see it now. And um, you, you. Um, I don't get builds. Oh, okay. I also did not get built. Oman got to build an army in south, and I think Ching built an army out in the east, maybe? Yeah. He built an army in hot. <laughs> yep. Because well, he, he didn't really have any place to build fleets anyway, um, which is probably probably kind of a... Well, it's not an issue with this map because of the fact that... Um, that, we, that you can convert fleet. armies to fleets and vice versa. He introduced that, uh, or he uses that transform... Uh, move, which I think is a really cool dynamic for this particular map or any map that doesn't have as many C spaces. Yeah. Uh, so going to the next year, we see now that. Why don't you tell me what's happening with you and Russia in the West? Yeah, so Russia is offering support into Armenia, and I am not responding. Like I, I'm kind of like I would rather you just stay out of it and and you know don't do anything. And Russia's like, no, 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 I'm going to support you with Armenia and to Alb. And I'm like, okay, I can't really say no, but I'm not a big fan of this idea because, you know, he's right next to Constantinople. And if he had really wanted to, he could have also moved Sebastopol into Black Sea and just nabs two of my centers and nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Uh, and then I am running away from not just armies in the middle with um, BRY into Riyadh because <laughs> what else is a man to do? And I move my fleet back into the Red Sea, which is intended... Uh, primarily to vacate Jerusalem and still be a productive unit. Oman didn't take it very well, but I told him that I needed to be able to cut support from MCC if I wanted to get Alge back, and he accepted it grudgingly, which is good enough for me in the situation. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to do things that your allies are barely okay with, especially when, as in this case, your ally has been fighting fairly inefficiently against your joint enemy. Yeah. Um, he has not accomplished much. Be, has he accomplished anything? Could be. Uh, he took Song here, I think. But he lost True, so it's it, yes. no real net gain. Now he does take something. He does take some ground here. Um, oh, so that that is um, yeah. That's Nudge is fighting well, but um, he you know he's still outnumbered. He's fighting two enemies on two fronts against his one self in the middle, and he kind of has a little. Um, a little parasite inside of him in form of my army. <laughs> uh, I like I like calling that a raider. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's got that to worry about. In the um, in the east, what we're doing is we are still trying very hard to actually take some ground from Ching, and because Ching had just won some ground from us, we are actually successful because we get back Kabul, and I take Hyderabad in exchange, um, and. It, it helps that Ching is distracted by trying to take over the last center that's in India itself of Mumbai. And then Oman is still supporting you for some reason. He could have saved True by tapping the Persian Gulf, but did not. Well, no one asked him to save True. Someone asked him for support, and it's nice that he's very considerate. <laughs> True. My, my dog's in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, thank you. Um, so we see this very, I love the colors of this map. We, we see this very pretty outcome after the seasons processed where crew has to retreat to one place. Um, Najd has to retreat to AFI or ASI and clearly chose AFI. So, yep. Uh, the West gets more interesting. Russia supports me into Alb, which I take. I don't, I don't complain about it this time. Uh, just quickly, there we are. And I tap MCC to try to make taking Riyadh back more difficult. Or actually, I tap MCC to make sure he can't support himself into Alge uh, because I'm not holding Riyadh. That's not happening. I'm just walking into Qatar because it's free. It's free real estate. Uh, meanwhile, Oman and Nas are still fighting. Uh, Oman is taking back True, which 
is kind of good for me and kind of bad for me because I'm weakening Naj anyways. And the goal is to get south before Oman can be like, oh, the Ottomans are going to be my enemy. I kind of I want to show up and uh, and kill him before he can say anything to me. <laughs> so very peaceful and gentle. Yes, but thanks to Russia's assistance, this is me gaining a center this year. Uh, so I'm glad for that. Hmm. Yay, Russia! <laughs> Yay, Russia! Russia's unwanted assistance ended up being exactly what you needed this time, after all. Yep. Um, in the east, there's not too much happening. This is the problem that we ran into, which is that actually this whole area is basically kind of like a stalemate line for Russia, or for Qing versus Russia, me, and India. Yeah. And especially because we don't have most of India. So Qing has inadvertently found himself what is basically a, a naturally occurring stalemate line in this variant map. Yeah, it's a an oversight, I think, that Ching definitely was glad to have. Oh, I, I, should, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, um, I'm happy because I, I get a build, I think. Yes, you do. And uh, Nash retreats and then disbands two units, but it colors your territory nice purple. <laughs> I, I go to Bam to fix that. <laughs> yep. And, and uh, in the West... Uh, I hold Constantinople in place as well as Med. To, uh, Med is staying there because when I fight Oman, I want to go to ATL. And until then, that's the only purpose of my fleet is to stand there. And if I want a convoy army, that's what it's going to do. Hmm. Uh, Jerusalem takes back Alge with help of Alb because we cut the support of MCC. Both Oman and I did that. Uh, and Qatar was unholdable, so I just moved to Kuwait in advance to make sure I can get there. Uh, apart from that, not much else is happening. There's Oman decimating Nash from the south because Nash is focusing more on me at this point, which is surprising considering that he stabbed me and then got stabbed by Oman, and now he is turning his back on Oman. But I'm not going to complain too much about that. It's funny how these things happen. Yes, and I am. Uh, I'm not telling Russia to pull arm back. I would very much like if Russia was to pull Armenia back from my border, but I'm not going to ask him to do that because he might not like that idea that, that I don't like that. <laughs> and I'm still something about that. Uh, I'm still not quite in the position to mess with Russia. It's very diplomatic of you. Still no progress happening in the East, by the way. <laughs> yep. Just pain. Yeah. Just, just pain, boredom. Um, Actually, you took the SH. Oh yeah. This is, this is where we hit the wall. Yeah. This is where you just can't do anything else. Cease to progress. <laughs> And Oman finally stopped assisting you to focus on the actual threat. Which is why we started to have the problems advancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We really needed that contractor there. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. And then in the... So this season, this was actually me being very accidentally treacherous to Naj. Because near, close to the deadline, I sent him a message that said, hey, Oman's going to be a bigger threat to us both in this position. You should move to San. I'll support you to San, and we can work together against Oman. And that was a genuine offer by me to work with him against Oman. But he accepted, and I forgot to change my orders. So they reflected the reality of, I'm going to kill you and take everything you have. <laughs> <laughs> Which was... Not good for me, because I didn't think that with Oman's extra unit, one of the game mechanics, he got an extra unit um, beyond what he had for centers. I did not want to have to fight him, because he would always have that edge up in me. He'd have more units, and unless I could persuade him, or someone else could persuade him, to misuse some of his units and do some questionable things, the prospect of defeating uh, um, Oman by myself was not a very good one. So as soon as this turn process says, I send an apology to Naj, I'm like, that was just me being uh, make, making a mistake. Uh, if you want to keep working together, I'm happy to help you with that. And uh, luckily, he did accept that offer, so we ended up working together in the next season. That is good to hear. Um, in the East, we're, like I said, this is basically when we hit the wall. I mean, we it's, it's not a completely perfect stalemate line or something. And Qing takes another center from India, as India is also occupying a center from Qing, but it's the kind of back and forth that doesn't represent actual progress. Yeah. Uh, 
So I guess you, uh, oh, Naj had to retreat to Kuwait. Yep, Naj had to downsize. <laughs> oh man, Naj has one dot left. Yeah, this was, this was the effect of me accidentally stabbing him very hard, was that he did not get much. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, I, I think he must have been pretty disheartened at this point. Yes, so then right here is where Oman is like, all right, let's start cooperating with DMZ common centers, and this is where I'm going, oh yeah, we can, yeah, we, you can have Riyadh, and we'll just work together. And um, that's not happening. I'm moving Med to ATL, and we're going on the warpath. Because <laughs> this is no, there's no way I can allow Oman to be this big right next to me. It's just not happening. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look that big, and he's, uh, there, there's a bunch of uh, sea spaces between you. I'm sure that all those fleets of his won't be used against. No, <laughs> certainly not. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny though. It looks like Oman had kind of the same idea as you. He supported himself into Red Sea here, and well, yeah, if... he uh, he told me that he did not like my South Coast Cairo fleet build, which um I can't blame him for not liking that. But it made it look like I hadn't just stabbed him at all. So I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, also, he chooses this moment to move MSC to OMN, uh, which is very good because it means that he wants to go get involved in the East and away from me, which I like. Yeah, I, I always I always appreciated having him getting involved in the East since <laughs> Oman and I were uh, friendly for some reason. I mean, there, there really wasn't an actually good reason for him to be helping me. No. <laughs> but that... Uh, I appreciated the assistance with no thought for personal gain. <laughs> That's There's nothing in it for him. It's just like, yeah, you know, it's for the balance of the game, whatever. For, for the good of mankind. Exactly. Um, and I, I'm sure he probably figured he had enough forces to defend himself against you while also involving himself on this other front. We'll see if he's correct or not. Yes, that we will. <laughs> um... Ching is still defending himself really well against us and has enough leeway to launch a bit of an attack on India here again. But it's the stalemate sort of position goes both ways. He can't really advance against us any more than we can advance against him, which I think is why he's transforming that Mumbai unit into a fleet here. It's a good it's a good investment. Yeah. And then uh, in this season, before the season, I message you and I say, hey, do you want to get in on attacking Oman? I'll convert <laughs> Mayuda and Alab to a fleet, and you can convert Isfahan to a fleet, and you know, I'll support you into the Persian Gulf. And you were quite enthusiastic about that idea, as I recall. Well, I wasn't getting any growth anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I figured, why not? This game is... Uh, I, I'll be amazed if I make it to the end game here. It's just, it's a matter of trying to survive and be a significant player in this game at all. Right now, I'm expecting to eventually be squashed between you, Russia, and Ching, or to be, or just you and Ching, or just Russia and Ching. Whatever combination of people, I'm expecting to get sort of folded between them and squished like a cockroach. Yes. Also in the West, I'm being a good ally now to Naj, and I'm helping him get another center. Uh, very nice. And my fleet that I put in ATL is serving its intended purpose in that now Oman has to move two units to deal with one of my units, which is pretty key to my whole thing of having less units than him. Guerrilla warfare, well done. Yes, I love that. That mechanic saved me, I think, that I could be annoying like that. Yeah, if you couldn't move from med to ATL, I think that would have been... Uh... Would have been a lot more, this would have been a lot more difficult for you because now he's somehow, despite having more units, you can feel how much he's on the defensive looking at this map. Yeah. Everything he has is running in circles. He's trying to go, he's going up to Kuwait and down to San and down here to Goy. <laughs> it's um, like a, a, all of his unit's hair is on fire or something. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, but it, it's funny from my perspective. I'm very happy about this. It is, it is pleasantly chaotic. Yes. 
And there in the east, we're still seeing nothing move. There's just a lot of support orders <laughs> entered everywhere <laughs> because every, every power in the east knows that we can all hold the line together if we just keep supporting to hold. <laughs> just stay still. Just stay still. No one will notice us. And then uh, this is where the west starts to get better because Naj can build a second army and we can start to actually chip away at Haman at this point. I'm glad it's getting better from your point of view. <laughs> it's getting better for me. <laughs> yeah. and, for, and for you, you're getting right, in, uh, right onto the Persian Gulf. Yes, I'm happy about that. And I, I'm thinking, you know, hopefully I might actually get a center out of this instead of you walking into Isfahan or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I am ready to betray Oman, <laughs> who has been nothing but nice to me. But what, what has he done for me lately, though? Well, he moved a fleet to ASE. <laughs> Okay, but besides that, <laughs> um, not much, I guess. You know, it's the only thing. You really have... <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, um, yeah, o Oman has mostly been helpful to me, but at this point, he could be most useful as a stockpile of centers for me to take. Um, <laughs> if, yeah. if I get to keep any of them. And uh, you can see I've, I've gained some of Nasha's trust because he's helping me in Tassan, and I am still being extremely annoying to Oman's attempts to kick me out of ATL. Yes. Yeah, I, I can see that. And Oman is just having to devote at least one fleet to keeping you from advancing any further. Like if you got into Indian Ocean from here, you're next to two of his centers, and you're very close to all of his other centers, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's also why he's self-bouncing with Sun and BOS in... Um, ASM. ASM. Because he, he really he, he can't afford to vacate BOS, even though that would be better than bouncing here. He should just be supporting BOS into ASM, except for he has the problem that then you could walk ATL into BOS. So he's got some big problems with that one distracting fleet. Yeah. If, if things had gone the other way, if he'd been the one to move to ATL and then to MED, I mean, that, that things could have been very different because... I would have died. Med is next to four of your center. <laughs> yeah, I cannot. I cannot have anyone in that in that zone. No, so my question for you is: Why is India cutting Hyderabad? Um, was that? It? Oh my god! India had his own had his own program here. I think his own plan. Um, I. I'm not sure if he thought that I was going to betray him in some way, or if he... I think maybe he wanted Hyderabad back. I, I just thought that was totally impractical. Yeah. Which it was, and the result is that he cut my... Well, Xing also cut my support, so it didn't, didn't make, matter. It didn't matter, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. <laughs> but um, India, you know, loses Gan and could potentially try to retake Mumbai from there. Or could try to attack Gan again. So it's not a devastating loss or anything, but it is kind of a funny waste of uh, move there. Yeah. <laughs> but Kabul is completely secure, so India just does whatever he wants with it. We aren't even discussing that unit. He could have walked into Mass if he wanted to. Oh my god. But, but he couldn't build, so like, what, what difference does it make? Yeah. India is, um, I, I think, not holding a grudge at this point, at least, about the fact that I stabbed him earlier when we were supposed to be friendly. Yeah. But also not very interested in being very disciplined and holding a line against Ching when he knows there's a very good chance that in the unlikely event that we defeated Ching that he would just get gobbled up at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so here you are there's a lot of arrows here. <laughs> yeah, this is big season for changing things. Um, this is Naj and I accidentally, I say accidentally, it's kind of accidental, kind of like, I'm not too concerned with him holding Riyadh. Um, he doesn't get, uh, he loses Riyadh to Oman. Um, I'm converting Al back into an army, I forget exactly why. I didn't think, it, I guess I just didn't think it would be very useful with you being Persian Gulf, I didn't want to be too antagonistic towards you. And it would be more useful as a bulwark against Russia if it was an army. Uh, meanwhile, I'm doing a bunch of tactical sequences to try to take centers from Oman in the south. I figure he's going to support himself into Indian Ocean anyways, so there's no point in pulling that trick again. Um, and I forget exactly what the tactical idea was behind all those moves in the southwestern corner of the map, but there was something there. 
Yeah, I think you were doing a little bit of uh, algebra here, trying to figure out what exactly you needed to do to advance as opposed to getting pushed back by Oman. And Oman was trying to do the same math and you using ATL to cut support from boss or to cut possible support from boss was probably the best use you could make of that considering you couldn't go anywhere else. I mean, yeah, we we're going to pull it back to med. So I should have allowed him. If I had not done anything to ASM, I would have gotten into boss funnily enough. <laughs> And that would have been uh, a gain of the center, so... Yeah, that's true. Take what I can get. But I hold on to San, and that's what matters. Because if not, or if Oman has to disband even one unit, his position will start to collapse, I think, at this point. I think you're right. It's, um, it's pretty fragile. And he lost True to me as well. Yeah. Because I just walked in. <laughs> at the same time, in the East... Um, after that sort of unpredictable random thing that India did last season where he moved Kabul to Hyderabad, I'm kind of ready to toss him off of the bus, <laughs> toss him o over the side of the train. And so I take Ching's support into Kabul while Ching um, self-bounces in Dell and bounces India out of Mumbai. So this finishes India off completely. Your, your Kronos taking the child and just tossing it back. <laughs> oh, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's just going to be in the way of the future exactly so uh now it does look like you guys are putting Russia firmly on the chopping block right, is that is yeah this is the point where you start to do that well you know I, mm -hmm. I I realized that since I could not beat Ching based on everything that we had been trying so far seemed actually physically impossible to drive Ching back might as well <laughs> join him <laughs> I mean, it worked out somewhat. And also, you can see if you go back to the retreats phase, yes. this is where it was important that Nanj still trusted me because he retreated to MCC instead of BRY to allow me to build still. Yes, that was, um, that was thoughtful, considering that the choice caused him to not be able to have the second army anymore. Yeah, you can see how much he trusted me at this point, um, and you'll see if that trust was misplaced. Well, I'm sure you'd never betray Nanj. You, you two were like, like the two guys. Muslim brothers. Yeah. Muslim brothers. <laughs> Muslim brothers, is that what you said? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and gosh, God knows those two, uh, you, you'd never be schismatic. No, obviously not. At least not with true Muslims. You know, about, <laughs> you know, about Persians. Anyway. The um, the build phase sees me get an army and a fleet. I'm happy about that. I'm planning on expanding my involvement in your fight with Oman because now that I can uh, now that I can smell victory, I want more of it. <laughs> yep, and I'm excited to have you because I want Oman gone as quickly as possible. Because this is about where I'm starting to think, hey, I could solo if I expand quick enough. It's true. You so could. I'm searching for that. And I am, I'm hoping that I will be the useful partner to you who is helping you get close but not quite achieve that result. Who doesn't get stabbed. Yes, the useful partner who doesn't get stabbed. Yes. The power of positive thinking. And at this point, I've kind of thrown Naj out the window. Um, Poor Naj. But I didn't do it with Oman. You can see I, um, this was a season where I was very, very mean to Oman. I told him that I thought that Chain and Persia were an existential threat, and I coordinated with Russia and told him the same thing. So, this is the season where Oman believes everything I say and moves all of his units that he can east, except for where I told him I'd give him back one of his centers and, you know, all that. So, I just walk in for free to Riyadh, I walk into BOS, I set up to take ASM in the fall, I set up to take Qatar in the fall. Uh, and I don't accept his support into AFI. Uh, but this is also about where I stopped telling Naj how to move his unit because I'm about to toss him back. <laughs> I don't need that anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is a hardcore season. This is this is really getting rid of the uh, throwing him overboard completely. Yeah, and of course. Um, I'm ready to try and help you as much as I can. That's why I'm transforming my unit and crew into an army. So mm. get deeper into, <laughs> into Omani territory. Um, but 
you know, I, I'm also uh, also in the process of trying to help Qing against Russia, and Russia is is kind of defending himself, but but Qing and I have him kind of outnumbered and surrounded, so it doesn't look very good for him either. Yeah. So in this season, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of um, conflict. It's mostly, uh, I think it's mostly against Russia in the north and against Omen in the south. I mean, you're yeah. obviously, you're, you were finishing off Najd, unfortunately for him. <laughs> I think he saw that one coming. He, I mean, he did. He told me in um, our press that he was you know, celebrating on the wall. Yeah, he, I'm sure he realized that at this point he had outlived his usefulness. Yeah. Which is always a dangerous spot to be in, in diplomacy. Indeed. And um, in the East, Qing and I were allied against Russia because <laughs> there's, been, there's been so many swaps. The alliances in this game were not particularly stable. No. I mean, in the East, they weren't. In the West, it was relatively stable insofar as I didn't really ever have any actual allies, except for you and occasionally Russia. I think that's a fair way of describing it. I mean, you got we, we together. We got Omen and Najd to fighting. Yeah, it was very bad for both of them, unfortunately. Uh, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was not a good result for either of them, but it worked out pretty well for you and me. Yeah, it went pretty well. So right here, um, this is. We can, I guess, explain the uh, the decision we came to with Oman. Is I promised that you would, in the long run, keep. Uh, true MSC and Saul, I would keep uh, Kader, Riyad, uh, Afi, and San, and we would DMZ, Yem, KHL, and the Persian Gulf. Yeah, I I think that that uh, you know could have theoretically been a good basis for a split. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if either of us would have ultimately kept to it in the long run and then just concluded a draw singing Kumbaya together, but I you know I probably not, but. <laughs> you know, worked in the moment. Yeah, it was a good basis for cooperation at the time. Yeah. Especially because you were willing to be flexible and let me have Qatar for now. Yeah, I let you have Qatar early because I was like, yeah, you probably need to make sure that Shane isn't just going to roll you over. Yeah, it, which felt like it was constantly a danger. Mm -hmm. um, and th this season, of course, sees, um, sees me as under at least as much threat as I've ever been from Russia, so can't exactly become independent of Shing right now either. Yeah. Yeah, that was that that was a dangerous place for you to be in. I think the only thing that kept Shing from stabbing you was that if he stabs you, then there's a very real possibility that I solo as a result of that. <laughs> Which Yeah. I think that's a powerful motivator though, so <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I do find myself using that motivation more than I would like, you know. One hopes that one can rely on one's charm and good nature and uh, reasonable arguments, and that it ultimately comes down to, well... If you do this, I'm bringing you down with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See here, yeah, so uh, in the Tangle in the East, because of Ching's help, ultimately I get to destroy that Russian unit in Ash, and um, with the gains of Cutter and MSC, I, I, get, uh, I get some builds. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> you get three builds. Well, two builds. Two places to put them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering from success. I I can't complain. I mean, you're also you're also doing quite well here with Oh, I'm having a great time. I get three builds myself. Yeah, and, and Ching or not Ching. Russia has even moved Armenia away from your centers, so Russia would have a hard time directly threatening you now. I don't know if that yeah, was if you even asked for that. I didn't, but it was very well timed. So what happened, because we discussed later on, is that him having a fleet in Sevastopol army in Armenia was he was going to try to cut me down as soon as it became clear that I was going to win over Oman and Najd and become a huge power. Unfortunately for him, as soon as I started to do that, he was assaulted by both of his eastern neighbors and no longer could afford to keep the knife hanging over my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russia... The Russian Russian player was good in this game. I just think uh, he kept suffering misfortunes at critical moments. Yeah. And, and, and Russia is also, I think Russia is also a good position in this game. It's just like... It is. It, it's, 
I think that as Russia, you probably naturally want to kill the Ottomans first. So the fact that I was able to convince him that was a bad idea for so long is quite beneficial for me in my position. Yeah, I think you're right, because if you're Russia, like getting into Bulgaria and Khan, I think it could be very important to your... First of all, you're securing a whole corner of the map that way. Yeah. Always nice. And it's also, you get into the Med, you have the key to expansion in uh, all directions. Yeah, you can pretty much ignore the East if you really want to and just become similar to what I did this game, but plus Russia centers. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I built uh, Fleet Khan, Army Jerusalem, Fleet South Coast Cairo. Uh, so the plan generally for me is to fan out a bunch of fleets across the Indian Ocean and take the, the general fleet supremacy in the Indian Ocean. And that way, uh, if I ever had the need to, say I was stabbed by my Persian ally, I'd be able to apply adequate pressure to your new holdings in Arabia. Uh, and I was also eyeing Russia's centers, but I didn't think now was the right moment to drive the knife in, because he was still serving the purpose of being annoying for you two and keeping that enormous mass of armies away from me. Yeah, I think I was... Uh, was I trying to get you to go in on Russia at this point? Um, I think you had been for a little bit, and I was I was kind of helping with Alb and trying to cut support of Waz, which I think was a mistake on my part, honestly, at that point. Um, it was unnecessary and it alienated Russia to me, where if I hadn't done that, he might have trusted me a little bit more. I think that you might be right. I think that this might have been a good time to stab me, <laughs> which is a weird thing for me to say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this was approximately where I made, I think, if you go forward a little bit, and you can explain your moves first, but after you go forward, I can explain the key mistake I'm about to make. Well, I got two armies because there's a, a land-based enemy to the north of me. Well, yeah, maybe one of those should have been a fleet, but there's a large... Well, if, if you built a fleet, I would have stabbed you now, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's why. I didn't. <laughs> um, there's a an enemy to the north of me who I can attack over land, so I built armies, and also because I am a little bit threatened by you. To be to be honest, yeah. I'm, I'm aware that you're a threat here. <laughs> Tell me about the mistakes you make. <laughs> yes, so I move Khan into Black Sea, and I move Jerusalem to Smyrna, and at this point, I'm I'm trying to do what Russia did to me. In all honesty, I'm trying to sit here with a knife over his head and be like, nope, you have to do what I say. Where that analog isn't fully accurate, because as I'm growing, because, uh, well, the, I took cut off from you, but that was consensual. That was uh, agreed. Uh, but as I'm growing, it becomes obvious to everybody that I'm a solo threat. And he can, in, he can, in fact, turn and ward away my knife if he's not being attacked by both of you in the east. Um, so we'll see what happens there. In the south, I convert Son to a fleet, and I move AFI to KHL, which the purpose of that, ostensibly what I told you, was that if Oman f puts a fleet in Yemen and a fleet in uh, GOY, which is the Gulf of Yemen, I think, then he'd be able to take Sal from you in the fall. And that would be bad for us because he'd retain one of the centers and keep being annoying. <laughs> um, now, having an army in KHL was useful for other purposes, but we can get into those later. Uh, I also do a bunch of... Sorry. I do a bunch of fleet dancing with Oman to try to grab his centers. And after the season, I sent him a message full of flowery language and compliments and calling him one of the strongest diplomacy players I've ever seen, which is mostly to try to get him to not, you know, be annoying. <laughs> you know, I, I was trying to get him to step down and accept. Quietly, that would yeah, be. Yeah, die quietly, please. Uh, um, yeah. I, I think I took the unit in KHL for the other intentions you may have had with it rather than <laughs> because I knew that I had the I had Sal that I was just about to acquire. Empty mm -hmm. empty MSC right next to KHL. <laughs> yeah. My holdings that are only temporarily in my possession is the feeling I'm beginning to get about those spaces. So um with with this season I think um I, I think it does yeah start to become threatening to everyone that you might be on your way to somewhere we don't want you to get <laughs> might be having some ideas yeah might be getting some ideas and and you guys are doing progress against russia and yeah we we are we are still making progress against russia i'm mm. attacking you now though i think yeah you decided that i was maybe too much of a threat <laughs> and uh 
decided to take Al, um, Alb from me. So I can, I'm gonna, I can explain all my moves. So the hope here, I did not think that if I had to fight everybody on the board, I'd be able to get to and maintain 18. I could get 17 pretty easily, but I thought that Russia would be able to hold me out of one of his centers. Looking back, this is the moment where I should have taken Sebastopol from Russia, and that I would have been able to maybe long-term get into Krasnodar and pull out a solo. Uh, but I was being patient because I was hoping that Russia would uh, accept that the army in Armenia was there because Persia might put an army in Waz and then he would threaten Baku. And that I would protect him from that. You know, in retrospect, if you had yeah, if you had gone into Sevastopol here, you would have gotten into Kras immediately. Yeah. And probably could have held it against our attack for the next year or two. Would have been close. Yeah. Uh, and then in the south, my hope was that you would allow me to stab you before fighting me fully, uh, which you didn't. That's why Al was moving to uh, Alge, because I wanted to build in it and then march on you. Which, yeah. That... Yep. I I uh, I have this this tingle on the back of my neck that kind of goes off whenever I'm about to be stabbed in the back. <laughs> and I was getting some strong tingles there, especially in this region where <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had nothing where you couldn't do anything. Um that I'm either about to be stabbed or it's going to look so tempting that by next year he'll stab me. So I yeah. might as well throw the throw the first stone. I didn't think I wasn't for sure that you were going to do it right now, so that's why I moved loot to ban. Yeah. I figured if he doesn't stab me right now, and I, I can get into true, then I might be able to keep MSC and Sal and true. Yeah, I um, yeah, I was, I was drawing up maps at this point to ensure that my moves would be correct, and the plan after this point because I, I moved into MSC instead of true because I figured I could destroy the unit in Sal. And from there, I'd have a, I'd have a good shot at at least 16. And I thought, my thinking throughout most of this game was, if I can get to 16, I can probably force my way to 18, one way or another. That's a good plan. Um, also, you can see that Oman went silent and didn't enter any orders, which means that my orders look kind of dumb. Because <laughs> uh, I was hoping that he would be a cooperative, um, cooperative dead body. <laughs> uh, but he wasn't. He was a so, dead body. He was a dead body, you know. He, <laughs> you know, he was somewhat cooperative, I guess. He's as dead as you can be. He's AFK. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, all the complex scheming, thinking about what he is going to do, what his last ditch effort to stop you is going to be, and he just sits there. He's just like whatever. It's over. <laughs> Which you know, probably relatable to a lot of people, but. Uh, not 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 really the way you want to go out because it looks kind of lame but also i know that shane was still working with me for at least this season because he tapped ind like i asked him to hmm. so that was a a nice little gift from shane to me that didn't really make any difference but a gift yeah yeah yep so now we have entered war <laughs> and yeah. uh, in this season my goals are to Destroy your unit in Sal. My goal is to retain Cutter, retain MSC, take Sal, retain Boss. I'll get a ton of builds. I know I can't take back Alb. Um, you can hold that if you want. I don't, have enough, I don't have enough units. So right there, my goal is just to make sure you're not going to sneak into any of my other centers and be annoying like that. Uh, and I am actually not intending to stab Russia right here. Not yet, anyways. Uh, soon, but not now. I wonder what I do. Wait, no. We're, we're... Oh, wait, no, it's build, so I'm, yeah. Now it's the build. Okay. There we go, okay. I was thinking that, um, uh, I was thinking that I should be very focused on holding Alb from that position. Um, let's see, it looks like you got two new armies. Yes. So the plan was to convoy one of my armies into Russia, and then the next season, if I successfully convoyed, I could force another center from him. Uh, hopefully, at least, or at least hold one, and then from there, grind him down. Uh, in the south, plan is pretty much the same. Take true, eventually take Sal first, hold my centers. And from this position, I'm going to eventually be able to take away Alp from you. Because you can devote 
per to defending alb for this season and you can then get wise and devote it but eventually i'll have four units bordering it until rush is ready and you'll only be able to sustain two defending it because i'll be able to cut persian gulf so the yeah. intention is to get it back eventually some way or another and also to fan out all my fleets across the indian ocean like i said yeah, it's interesting. I feel like the fact that the uh, sea spaces are so few in this game plays a big role because, well, well, we'll see as it goes on, but once someone has control of the oceans in this game, it's pretty difficult to wrest that control away. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can do it. It just requires a lot of trust between <laughs> some not necessarily very trusting people after the history of the game. Well, it requires trust and also a lot of maneuvering and time yeah. uh but so uh, i in this season i guessed wrong with where russia was going to be i was i was thinking he was going to hold sevastopol uh, in hindsight the best move here is definitely convoy with sevastopol because if he goes and holds in sevastopol i will not be able to hold krasnodar anyways because you can tap armenia and then force it so i should definitely have convoy not of sevastopol and held that mm. uh, in the south we trade alb for alge which is annoying for me and something i did not particularly like uh the prospect of because now you have a unit behind my lines being very annoying that i have to deal with all the time but i do successfully uh get your unit in sal destroyed yeah uh and this is uh something that i i acted with uh every time i entered orders i was always saying like well he's surely he doesn't think i'm gonna be this stupid so one of the things i did thinking like that is i just vacated catter i just didn't put a unit in it <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean I think it surprised you enough because you didn't move anything towards it. No, I was not expecting that. <laughs> I was focused on my own centers and uh, on defending them. Uh, I I moved Alb to Alge. I was thinking I might be canceling out your attack um, rather than taking a unit uh, taking a center from you necessarily. But yeah. either way would be a good result for me. So, um, but you you offered a good offense here, I think. It was just that this was also the moment when I convinced Ching and Russia that you are going to solo if we don't stop fighting. <laughs> if we don't all move everything over, this man is about to win the game. And they I go, mean, okay. It was very effective. I'm very happy just, with the result. Look at that. Like, Ching, everything goes south. Yeah, that was about... I was outlining uh, a map of the worst-case scenario for me in this game of this turn. And I'm looking at it over here, and that is about the worst case scenario on my map. <laughs> like, the only thing Ching could have done that would have been worse for me, he could have moved uh, MAH to GOB instead of to MUM. And if he had moved ASE to IND, he would have bounced me and would have really sent me back in controlling the oceans. Um, apart from that, I also. I thought that there was a real chance that you were going to move uh, P uh, the Persian Gulf to OMN and then move ISF into the Gulf, and that would have also put a stranglehold on me. Mm. Yeah, in retrospect, that would have been a good decision, although then I would have lost uh, Alb and not gained any center back. Uh, well, if you had, you could have supported it to hold with KHZ, and then uh, you wouldn't have gotten into WAS this year, but that, I don't think it's a huge deal compared yeah. to gaining OMN. Mm. If I didn't get into Wise, then Alb would be surrounded, and I'd be outnumbered there. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, there were yeah. some payoffs that had to be made, but yeah, you get command of the seas here, and it is very important. I'm glad to have it. So then we have another retreats phase. My unit in Sal gets destroyed. Your unit in Alge has to pick a retreat. I go to Bry, I believe. Yep. Yes. And then you're uh, trying to reclaim Alge immediately. Yes. Although uh, I, ex sorry, I expected to be kicked out of Alb anyways with the amount of troops you had around it and the amount of troops I had around it. So at this point, I'm focused on trading Alge for Alb back because that's better for me. I would rather you not have a unit <laughs> in Alge. It's just not something I like very much because you can retreat into all sorts of places and it will require at least three of my units to get rid of. And... Um... I think that the battle that's taking place at sea right now doesn't really... I don't think there's really that much to say about it. It's, uh, you know, you're advancing. It's <laughs> yep. We don't have enough fleets in the water right now to do anything and fight you properly. Um, we're trying to position to do that, but it's 
it's slow, especially because all of Ching's units are armies, except the, what are now two fleets. Um, yeah. For now, this is my won't destroy. The issue being that there are, are several layers of sea center um, sea tiles between the centers, mm -hmm. so it takes time for me to actually try to project power into India. It's very difficult. Yeah, and let's see. There's I kept Alge for right now, so yep. there's just one retreat, and it's Ching going to Oman, Oman rather. Yep. And then I get a nice little army in Jerusalem, which will help me to rein in Alge. You really needed that. I, yeah. If I'd lost Alch just then, I could have retreated to Jerusalem. <laughs> it would have been very painful. I would have been, it, it, yeah, I, I, could, I could definitely see that, because then I'm right next to Cairo. I'm, you could have converted to a fleet and go into med if you wanted to be... God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. That would, that would have been... Uh, or, or even into the Red Sea. <laughs> any, uh, any of those... It so many things. I'm very glad that it stay put well opportunities and then about right here is what i'm thinking i probably i probably can't solo in this game i don't think that this position is going to allow me to get to 18. yeah i, I think um i i think that this was it was really touch and go in my mind for a while. I wasn't. I was really uncertain whether there was whether there would actually be a point where we could really stop you, yeah. and start pushing you back, because you know it was entirely possible in my mind that you couldn't be stopped, or just as bad that we would be stuck. Because especially at sea, it just didn't seem likely that we would ever be able to. I mean, look at all these all these fleets in the south here. You have yeah. way, way too many. So even I accidentally self bounce in IND, which is <laughs> uh, a mild annoyance, but doesn't really make any difference in the grand scheme of things, I don't think. No, but it's just you have so many fleets, you can barely keep track of them yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, we just get the Indian Ocean, guys. It'll, it'll all work out. Yeah. And then around Alge, I am uh, again moving boldly and opening up centers to be bounced uh, and just trying to surround you at any cost. And destroy that unit because I was not a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can understand that. Albeit that um, I was a big fan of that unit and wanted it to push through, <laughs> be free, fly like a bird, heroically, <laughs> heroically make a great, great stand against the enemy. You could be the uh, the first Persian to bathe in the Mediterranean since uh, I think Khosrow the Great in the six hundreds. Maybe five, I think it was five hundreds. <laughs> so, wow. Then uh, in the south, I take true from you because you try to convoy up to Kuwait to be annoying, and I predict and bounce you. Man, I, I the second time I left Qatar, just wide open. <laughs> I should have convoyed to Qatar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just being crazy in some of these moves. It's kind of intentional, though. I figured if I was going to win at this point, I'd have to be pretty bold. And uh, being a center or two worse off in the draw is not something I'm particularly afraid of. Yeah, you were fighting very well here. I mean, it was... It, it, I, I knew that the only place where we could break through um, without a lot of time, a lot of time, <laughs> was going to be in Russia. Because that yeah. was the only place where you were not only... Not only were you outnumbered, but there were also just empty spaces up there. Like mm -hmm. Bulgaria and Khan are empty here, and um, Wall, whatever that is. Wallachia. Wallachia, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, Wallachia is empty up, up there. And if we could break through up there, that's a pretty important region. That's our only way of really uh, sweeping your legs out from under you. Yeah, I was, that was my Achilles heel. And, and then this outcome is much more to my liking, of course. Uh, I get to take back Al. I think, actually, you can explain your moves first because I, I saw those moves and I was perplexed. <laughs> um, so, I think I well, first I recognized that I couldn't possibly hold Alp, and um, so I think that the moves from for Alp and KHZ and Isfahan are all they're all I recognize they're all impotent moves. None of them can do anything right now. Um, so I just set moves. <laughs> um, so like, if, not... if he does all these bold things again, he's going to pay for them. 
Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm using Alb to tap Smyrna because um, I'm supporting Russia into Armenia, and I want to. Actually, I think that that makes this land. Yeah, I think that it makes it impossible for it not to land in Armenia. Yeah. And I told Russia, you should transform both of your armies in your home centers into fleets. And that way, like this, this is the only place we can succeed with our offensive. So we should devote everything to this. I was not a fan of this idea of <laughs> Russia having fleets. I, I was a big fan. I was like, this is the only way it can work. And your Caspian Sea Fleet Russia needs to go be landlocked and become an army as soon as possible. Yeah. And then you can get that over to, um, to one of your other spaces that's connected to the Black Sea. Maybe you make that a fleet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. could, given where that is you couldn't possibly have too many you need to control the black sea and then you'll control bulgaria constantinople and then then the sky's the limit yeah so i hear i recognize that armenia is lost so i'm moving it into alb uh, so it obviously if i try to use armenia to support into alb i'll probably just not take alb this season uh, is my thinking because you will support it to hold or whatever and alb will be or armenia will be cut and then it will be lost so that's my thinking, and it, it worked out pretty well. Armenia was lost, and I did get Alba back, which was good, because it allowed me a build. Uh, in the south, uh, I don't get to keep true this season, because you are mean, and you are coordinating with your allies, and cutting my support, which is mean. <laughs> um, but the fact that he's cutting my support means that I get into OMN, which I think may have been more important in me holding a line than getting true back. So in in your position, I might have chosen to hold OMN instead of holding or instead of retaking True. I mean, we, we there were a few things we could have done better here. Um, yeah. Um, one of which is that we we managed to move uh, Gobi into ASE. We should have moved Gan into Gob. I mean, yeah. this this is just a way. <laughs> I didn't expect you would actually move, use ASE as the mover, and I thought I was just cutting your support. I figured that I wasn't going to be able to hold ASC as a C tile in the long run if I also wanted to hold OMN, and I would rather have OMN than ASC by a mile. That makes sense. Uh, and also, I think it, I think in the focus on retaking True, it kind of, sorry, it kind of shows that you're the one coordinating the moves in a lot of the regions because of the focus on let's get Persia center back. For a lot of the last few seasons, I was writing the orders. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, there is a focus on getting Persia center back. Look, if Persia, all, all of Persia's units are on the front lines. If we have to lose a unit, we should lose Qing's units. <laughs> yes, fair enough. You got this useless army in Kaz, and the, the, this other useless unit in Dell, and he keeps he needs to transform as many of these armies as possible, and it's just not happening very quickly. So he's a little bit suspicious of the Persian initiative of Persia. Or not sorry, um, Qing, you don't need an army. Don't need an army. Don't worry about armies. You don't need it. <laughs> this is the end, man. We have to. We have to throw everything we can at the Ottoman Empire, and then if we manage to survive that, then we can worry about Persia. So, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I also convert Cato to a fleet because I want the Persian Gulf as well. Um, it's probably. I, I think it's the most important sea tile on the map. I think it's more important than Black Sea at this point. Uh, yeah, because I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you take Persian Gulf, you're it, it's it's a very useful space for a lot of things. Although, a, a, admittedly, any support from there was going to get cut at this point by either yeah. you or me. But it can still convoy to like ten different places. Yeah, and it can it forces you to garrison a bunch of centers as well. Or if you had it, it would force me to garrison a bunch of centers, yes. which was would be very inefficient use of my units. <laughs> so. Here we see that my uh, unit that was in Alp gets destroyed. I expected that. I was felt like that was a worthwhile sacrifice. Not terribly unhappy about it. Um, chain I build Ruby. Hmm? I build a fleet con. Oh yeah, because I have some tactical ideas to use against Russia. Also, I believe right here is when I start whispering in Russia's ear and telling him, "Hey, I'll give you Constantinople and Bulgaria, and then we can turn on these Persian and Chain troops." And we can cut them down, and we can, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll kill Persia, and then we'll have a three power draw instead of a four power draw. Isn't that great? <laughs> and uh, I've now learned that he told you guys about this idea, which doesn't surprise me too much, but it is kind of sad. I mean, you know, it's just just vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm sitting here like, you know, we could have a good time. 
Um, I would definitely not try to solo again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very believable. I like the way the word again is in there. <laughs> that uh, always if makes the promise more believable. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed... You'll never try again. <laughs> yes, so um, I'm offering him stuff, and he's like... At first, he's very like, I like this idea. So I assume he like we were talking one night, and I assume that he hadn't told you guys yet. So he was very enthusiastic about this idea, and he's like, Oh, that sounds great. I would actually like to be bigger, and the, you know, this sounds really good. This sounds like a much better situation that I'm in right now. And then he talks to you guys, and from then on, his messages are, Yeah, yes, okay. <laughs> oh, Russia wasn't doing a very good job as a double agent. <laughs> no, it was. I was like, this man is not in on the plot at all. He's uh, definitely not liking this idea very unfortunate so this is where i'm starting to doubt my eventual victory because i have 14 uh, i have, sorry i have 15 in this position and getting from 15 to 18 is going to be very hard right now because i need a classic map and this map is more difficult really yeah um i still thought i had an outside chance at like tricking you and getting into Isfahan, perhaps, and if I got into Isfahan, I could top you like a deck of cards and get into Tehran guaranteed, and maybe Mass. Maybe I could got into Mass as well, but that's hard. Uh, I don't know if I could have gotten any Russian center to this point. It's he's got a lot of fleets, yeah, and a lot of armies. He's really garrisoned the homeland, and and yeah, he's got these two un two uh, centers behind the lines. That essentially that are that are fueling that. So I, 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 I start to have some some faith that will push you back here. Yes, and I was entertaining some interesting convoy ideas. I was thinking about convoying MSC to India at some point. Was one of my ideas that I got. Um, we'll see what happens with me and convoying things later down the line. But uh, and then I can explain my tactical moves in Russia. I knew that he's going to take Black Sea, uh, but I want to maintain control of Bulgaria for as long as possible which involves not getting my fleet in Black Sea disbanded. So I support Constantinople into Armenia so that I can retreat Black Sea to Constantinople. Let's and see. let's see, actually, this is the spring. I'm going to lose Bulgaria anyways, but... No, this is good stuff. Yeah, this is, I think this was about the best move set I could have had. And I'm, I'm proud of it. Yeah, these are good tactics. Good, uh, good planning. And uh, there's not that much to say on our end. Like mostly, I'm thinking about what Russia's doing. I'm also trying to, you know, find my moment when I will inevitably break through and retake Al Alb, or or we'll retake some sea spaces. But um, so I destroy Russia's army and I retreat to Constantinople, and you retreat to KHL with your Persian Gulf fleet that I drove back. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It's lucky that that space was open. <laughs> yes. Because then I can try and retake Persian Gulf immediately. <laughs> Pain. So then, some more stuff. I'm like guaranteed to lose Bulgaria at this point, but if Russia went with my ploy and decided to believe me, then I could have held on to it with uh, bouncing him. Uh, I'm just throwing in orders to advance into Indian Ocean because there's no downside to ordering Gulf of Yemen to advance. And I saw that Shane bounced himself in Hyderabad, so I ordered a support for Delhi into Hyderabad just in case, you know? just in case that'd be annoying and I tried to convoy Alge into your south but that got cut because you drove my fleet in Persian Gulf back Phew, yeah that would have been bad yes that was like my last I think my last gasp for a solo was that I, I think you I think you played very well here like this you're, you're grasping for every opportunity it's really really the spirit of what we try to go for here thanks um but yeah i think um at, at this point i think it was starting to look kind of like we would slowly but surely but inevitably so grind you down yeah, this is where i looked for how can i hold them where they can't do anything so at this point my orders were going to be con to med armenia to con supported by smyrna and i wanted to get it back into persian gulf and if I possess Persian Gulf, I can hold the stalemate in the Indian Ocean. You can't pressure Al because I can support it to hold with Jer and Alge, and you can't pressure Khan because I can support the hold with Smyrna and Mediterranean. And if, even if you cut Smyrna, you have to do it with Armenia, so you can't pressure me anyways. So I would have had a permanently holdable position, hmm. but I don't know if it would have been worth all of our times, <laughs> especially given that I, I didn't expect you guys to go on any stabbings. Yeah, I, I think that that was not going to happen at this point. Yeah. 
So um, this was just me uh, walking up to stalemate lines, essentially, and ensuring that I was secure at 15 centers no matter what. And that's about it. Uh, I examined today every single center possible to take Bulgaria, Sebastopol, Krasnodar, Isfahan, Hyderabad, and Mumbai, and none of them seemed particularly realistic with good play from you guys. Yeah, I, I think um, at this point it was looking like we were more likely to to um, start taking at least some ground from you, mostly at sea. Mostly, like, I, mostly, uh, let me see. I think we would have eventually, we were going to get ASE probably. Yeah. Yeah, and um, possibly in from there. Um, and you couldn't get in from there because I kept in Yemen. You can the pressure from two sea tiles. Uh, oh yeah, we would have to get um, we'd have to get into o OMN instead, and then try to get into Goy or one of your coastal centers. Yeah, so it would have been a slog <laughs> if we were to try and keep going. The game might have gone for a couple more months. Oh my god. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm glad this is the final position. The game did not need to go any further. You proved that you were a uh, you know, juggernaut in your own right by yourself. <laughs> I was one to try. Was this the final? Yeah, this was the final position. Yes. I believe. Yes, because Kata was about to be converted to a fleet. Oh, yes, that makes sense. But it remains an army. I can send you my final moveset if you want it. Yeah, that sounds like a sounds like a fun thing to have. You, you're doing very... Uh, you're, you're doing very well here in terms of just making good decisions as far as tactics. This, this is what I was planning for the uh, final screen you can see in your Discord. Oh, I see. Yeah, you were going to um, give up Armenia to move to Constantinople. And uh, yeah, I was probably going to, we were probably going to try and take Armenia from you at the same time that you're just walking out of it. Yeah. Probably a good decision. And like you said, you can defend uh, forever <laughs> from med. <laughs> that, that could be a problem if you can defend forever <laughs> from that space. We will never surrender. <laughs> That's... Um, sure, there must be some crazy way to, <laughs> to dislodge you eventually. You would have to go to ATL. It'd be in any notion, then you could get to ATL and cut my support from med. That would have been how you would take Constantinople. This sounds like quite a journey. Yes. <laughs> well, it was a well-played game, I believe. Likewise. I, I, think that, uh, I think that the players who survived really deserved it. There's not to say anything bad about those who died, but um, I, I think we all kind of earned our ending here. <laughs> yes, although I, I do have questions about Ching and his indefinitely holdable <laughs> eastern corner position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had some questions about that too. We, you know, we've already given that feedback to the designer, and I'm sure he will um, add some more spaces so that it's possible to break up Ching a little bit better, or and or take away some neutrals. Yeah, probably some combination of both of those things. Yes. Well, my key question, though, and it, which has nothing to do with tactics, is: Did you like this map? Um, I think you said you would play it again. I had a lot of fun on this map. I I agree. I mean, which uh, which countries do you think are best and worst on it in terms of which ones would be easiest to play with? I definitely think I got a good position with the Ottomans. Um, it's it might be a little too big to be very wieldy, big target on its back, but I'm not complaining. Uh, I think in this map, Ching is obviously pretty good for the defensive position, <laughs> and I think that Oman is a really good power in this map and probably should have had more success than he found in this game. Uh, I think that the extra unit is a very, very useful tool to have in that if he had played his cards correctly, he probably could have been, like me, but even more of a juggernaut. I think those are very good points. Um, yeah, and, and I think that you, the countries you didn't mention are especially India and Nejd, I think that those countries are kind of in cursed positions. Mm. I mean, Nejd in particular only really has the likelihood of getting one neutral. So I think Nejd, the play for Nejd is probably to sign some sort of agreement with the Ottomans and try very hard to convince the Ottomans to go north, uh, including getting Persia to sign on to an agreement where Persia also goes north. I think that's probably the best play that you can make is Nejd. I think that would have been a uh, good play, yeah. Um, 
And I think, as for my country of Iran, um, I, I think that it was kind of middling, but I think there were some good opportunities for sure. I mean, I, I would uh, probably have enjoyed being Russia or Qing or Ottoman a little more, but I would I would definitely have preferred Iran over Nasht or India. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, those, some, some countries are, you know, possibly cursed in terms of their positions on this thing. Yes. Um, especially India having a fleet at the beginning, I think, is completely... <laughs> it doesn't serve any purpose. No, especially when you can transform later if you want it. <laughs> yeah. It, uh... There's nowhere for, the, for them to project power with that fleet, regardless. Yeah. But um, I'm glad you enjoyed the game, and I, I had a great time playing with you and with the other folks who were, uh, were in there with us. Yeah, it was a good time. I look forward to your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy these videos, like so many viewers who love the variant commentaries, I hope you will show it with a like, and by joining the roughly half of my viewers who are subscribed. And I also support putting your hands together for the thoughtful and generous people whose names now appear on screen, our wonderful patrons and translators. A special hand for King of Prussia, who made this video with me. Remember that you too can join the Alligator Army by clicking the link to join my Patreon in the video description to gain access to a world of exclusive Diplomacy Podcast episodes and occasional videos that are only accessible through my Patreon as well as early access to all YouTube content. Until next time, Florida Man, out.